All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to worship here at Ascension. A very special welcome to guests and visitors that have joined us tonight. We're glad and thankful that you're here, because every time we're here, we're all about Jesus and what God has done for us in Jesus. Tonight is the first of our three special Holy Week services, where we're thinking about the last hours of Jesus' life before he dies on the cross. What does he say? What does he do? What did he come here to do to win our forgiveness? And I know tonight our service is at 6 p.m., so I got to ask you, are you hungry? Yes, some of you are hungry tonight. Uh, our bodies tell us a lot of times when we need food, right? They make it very obvious. We know and we then give it food. But how about your soul? Are you hungry? Are you feeling like you need something to support you, to fill you with encouragement and give you hope? Well, on one of Jesus' last nights, you know what Jesus did? He gave us a very special meal that was not just for our bodies, but for our souls. Tonight, we're going to see that God meets our appetites, not just for the things of this world, but in Holy Communion and in our Savior Jesus for so much more than that. Everything you're going to need for worship, you can find printed up on your screens here or on your screens at home. May God bless our worship this evening. Our opening song is Jesus Christ, our blessed Savior. Please stand. We begin our worship this evening with words that remind us of what God does for us in our baptisms. When he washes us clean of our sins, he makes us his. He adopts us into his family. He connects us to Jesus. He gives us what our souls need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But every time we gather together, we do admit that we haven't done what we need to do that we are sinners who have an appetite for something that this world cannot offer, that we need forgiveness. If we, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. And our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, by Christ's authority, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, you give us your true body and blood as a remembrance of your suffering and death on a cross. Grant us so firmly to believe your words and promise that we may always partake of the sacrament to our eternal good. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Every time we gather here at the center of our worship service is God's word. Tonight we've got three different parts of the Bible that we're taking a look at. The first one comes from Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 through 30. This is kind of like the backstory behind the Lord's Supper. This is the setting for the apostles and for Jesus on this night. This is where it comes from. And you can see God designed it to be something that was good for their bodies, but much, much more than that, good for their souls, because they knew God would watch over them and keep them safe and deliver them. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and the sides of the door frame and will pass over that doorway, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshipped. The Israelites did just what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on the throne, to the firstborn of the prisoner, who was in the dungeon, and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the Egyptians got up during the night, and there was loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. This is the word of the Lord. The second part of God's word that we're going to take a look at comes much later, in fact, after Jesus had been on this earth, from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. This meal that God gives us, he uses this interesting picture of a loaf of bread and how a loaf of bread is one and the same, and you can't have mixtures in dough. It's all mixed together and one. That's us as Christians when we take the Lord's Supper together. That's our unity with each other, but we're also united with God through our Savior Jesus and his body and his blood shed for us. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf. We, who are many, are one body. For we all share the one loaf. This is the word of the Lord. Kids, to get you interested and excited and listening carefully in the sermon, we're going to talk tonight a little bit about food. And tonight, you guys, you can talk about yourself, or you can also talk about us, your, your moms and your dads and the people that take care of you. Here's my question for you tonight. What does it look like when you're really, really hungry and you don't get food? What does that look like for you guys? What things happen? Yeah, you want to eat bread, right? You want to eat more food. Thanks, Margot. What else happens, Nora, when you want to eat food but you don't get any? Oh, sometimes your parents tell you to wait a little bit. Yeah, that happens in our house. That's right. <laughs> Nora, what do you think? What happens? If, if you don't eat food, you won't survive. <laughs> really good. Thank you, Nora. That's great. You won't survive if you don't eat food, right? You need to eat food for your body. How about this? You can say this about your parents. I, if your parents don't eat food for a long, long time, do they start to get kind of cranky? 
Do they start to get a little bit mean and a little bit upset? And yeah, does that kind of happen? Well, of course, that happens to your parents, that happens to you guys, that happens to all of us. Because like Nora said, if our bodies aren't getting the things we need, we can show it. We feel it. Do you guys know what we're talking about tonight? The Lord's Supper? Yeah, this is, this is Jesus and the special meal that he gives. But, but you'll see tonight, really, it's this tiny, tiny piece of bread and this tiny, tiny cup of wine. And it doesn't really fill up your belly. Do you know what this is for? This is to feed our souls. This is to connect us to Jesus. Because without this connection to Jesus, just like our bodies make us really upset and mad when they don't get what they need, our souls need that too. So listen carefully in the sermon. We're going to talk about how Jesus gave us this very special meal and how it's different because it's food for our souls. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us here tonight. We ask that you help us listen carefully and learn more about this special meal that you give. Thank you for connecting us to Jesus, our Savior, through our baptisms and through your word. And help us to look forward one day to when we can join together in the Lord's Supper. In your name we pray. Amen. Please stand. This part of the Bible is called one of the Gospels, where it's all about Jesus and what Jesus has done. So we stand to show honor for Jesus like we would do for someone of high rank or authority. This comes from Mark chapter 14, verses 12 to 26. This is the basis of the sermon. We're going to talk a lot more about what Jesus said, how he said it, and what he wants this to be for his disciples all the way to us today. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table, eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. The Son of Man will go just as, as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated for our next song, Behold the Lamb.
Let's all join together and pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for you are our rock, you are our redeemer. Amen. So along with the experience of trying new foods, sometimes comes very cautious, uncertain feelings. Because the Hole in the Wall barbecue restaurant out in North Carolina is not the bright, lit up room of Smithfields. Because maybe the way that the food gets served to you, not just individually, but like family style and you share it like a family, that's weird. Maybe the flavors are flavors from way around the world and your palate is not used to them and when they enter your mouth, you say, that's new, that's different. Because whenever you're trying new food, something that might be new, it can be hard, it can be scary, but that's the only way to find out a new food that is good, that you like. On this night, the Thursday before Jesus died, his disciples thought that they were going to eat a familiar meal, one that they had eaten many, many times before. But during the meal, it was really obvious. They came to understand that this meal was different. This was new. This was better. So tonight we're going to try to look from their perspective. We're going to approach this with some uh, cautious uncertainty. But God's going to shape us and help us see that this meal is new and different and just better for our souls. What happened normally on this Thursday night was something back then that all of those people knew and understood and, and people just took for granted. It was the first day of the Festival of Unleavened Bread. And if you don't know, this was a really busy preparation day for their celebration of Passover. We got that in the Old Testament lesson, kind of what that is and why that came to be. For us, maybe you can picture like Thanksgiving Day, but before the meal. Oh, and the disciples knew how this day should be going. They would have bread that they had to bake. They would have lots of food they had to buy. They'd have a lamb that they would have to find, not like a broken or a messed up lamb, but a perfect lamb without anything wrong with it. They would have to take that lamb back to the temple where the priests would slaughter that lamb and then take the blood and pour it out. And then they'd have to roast that lamb over a fire. I mean, these people were going to have to prepare a multiple course meal for that night. And they weren't alone all over the city of Jerusalem, all over the country of Israel. This is what people did on this night. The disciples were people that were just used to this meal. And for them, things do go according to plan. Yes, amazingly, you heard how Jesus tells them exactly where to go and what to say and what to do. And all these details line up just perfectly. But the structure of that night did not change at all. They went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So, they prepared the Passover. Everybody back then knew the specific di directions for the Passover meal. Because, as we heard, it celebrated God's rescue from Egypt. That's when God established it. Do you know the bread? It was baked without yeast because back then there was no time. They were leaving too fast. The bitter herbs that were part of that meal were to remind them of the bitter life that they had in Egypt before God came and rescued them. And the blood of the lamb? Yeah, that was that special thing that when they put it on the sides and the top of their door frames, that's what would save them from death and destruction and disaster. The Passover meal was so much more than just food. It reminded them about their God who loved them and came to rescue them, and who would never leave them. And did you hear when kids were young, kind of like a lot of our kids are young, and they asked their parents, hey, what does this mean? Then every year the parents would say, this is why we eat this food. This is what this meal is for. This is what the Passover is. So up to Jesus' time, 
Everybody did it. Because the Passover was part of God's covenant with his people. That is an agreement that he made with his people, Israel, way back at Mount Sinai. It was one of these things that God told those people that they have to do, no question, every year. They do it. After Moses read the law and all that God required from them, do you know what happened after he said this is what you do? He took blood from a sacrifice and he sprinkled it on the altar to show the people that God would keep his part of the promise to save them. Then Moses actually took some of the blood and sprinkled it on the people to show that the people had a role in keeping this promise with him too. And then the people would try to obey him and he would be their God. But like every deal, every two-way agreement, God had some big requirements for them. What's a deal breaker thing for you? Let's think about when you're buying a car. What's a deal breaker for you? Blue only? How about cup holders? Any less than six, that's going back. The age, the miles per gallon, whatever little detail, right? If it's something that you've got on your wish list and it's there and it's something else, you say, nope, that's a deal breaker. We're not going through. We're not doing it. Do you know what a deal breaker was for God in this two-way covenant between him and people? Anything. For this covenant and agreement to work between God and people, they had to obey everything perfectly. Every detail, every meal, every celebration, every day. Anything else would be a big deal breaker. Even sinning one time was going to destroy the relationship between God and people. So yeah, the Passover meal was the celebration meal, but it was also a necessary part of every Israelite's life every year, including these disciples. That's why when they got into this meal with Jesus, they recognized really quickly this new meal, this was different. To start that night during the meal, the differences uh, showed themselves when Jesus said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me one who was eating with me. Of course, they started going back and forth. Surely not I, they said. The meal that they thought they knew had taken this sharp, sharp turn from remembering God's saving power and ability to bring his people out and to love his people to one of Jesus' closest friends who had been with him for years betraying him. They all started looking at each other and wondering in their own hearts if they might be the one to do it. If they were the ones who were going to break God's covenant agreement with Jesus. And they should have been. You know these disciples like I do, right? These are people that not one of them had kept their covenant with God. They had clearly broken God's laws, right? We heard about it is they fight over their positions of authority among the twelve. When they mistake Jesus to be this earthly power, to set up an earthly kingdom to come and rescue them, when they focus in on the earthly blessings that Jesus would bring more than the spiritual things, when in just a few minutes after this they would betray him and run away from him and deny that they ever know him. No, they had not kept their agreement and they wouldn't keep their agreement after this. Their two-way covenant with God and their relationship with God, it was broken. I think you know that you and I can be grouped in with them too, right? We've broken our relationship with God. Our communion with God, this at one thing with God that should always be true, we sin and we break it care about our position and our authority and our influence most. We get lost in the things of this world and we forget about what God says. We deny Jesus every time that God gives us an opportunity to share him and we say nothing. Our relationship with God on our own, it's broken too. But that's why we need this meal. 
that's what our hearts and our souls are longing for because we have broken our relationship and our covenant with God. He gives us a new one on this night. And good news, it is only a one-sided agreement with one person doing all the work. What the disciples then get to see and hear and taste and touch. This is God's new one-way agreement with his people. Words that you know so well as Christians. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He told them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. This meal, this new food, this was new and better and different. This was not the old Passover meal. This is what their hearts were longing for. When Jesus establishes the Lord's Supper, he gives his disciples, he gives us something so much better. Yes, he gives us bread and wine, but in, with, and under, in some miraculous way that our, heart, our heads can't understand, Jesus gives us his true body and his true blood. This meal, every time we do this, this connects us to his body, which would go and suffer for us. It connects us to his blood, which was poured out and shed for us and our sins. He gives us these things that we can taste and touch and feel and see to know his grace and how much he loves us. This meal, this covenant is new and better and different. Most of all, we get this in Matthew's gospel account of the Lord's Supper, where he tells us that this food, this meal is for you for the forgiveness of your sins. And good news, we don't have to do anything to earn it. This is God's one-way promise to us. That's how forgiveness comes to us from God, right? It's a one-way covenant, which is an agreement that won't be broken because God does not break promises. God always follows through what he says. And it's something that was sealed the day after when Jesus went to the cross and Jesus cried out like we're going to hear tomorrow. It's finished. It's done. We are forgiven because of what Jesus did. We are forgiven when we take the Lord's Supper because this meal connects us to Jesus. And our relationship with God is restored because he is faithful to us no matter what. So sometimes it's a pretty rewarding experience when you try new food that might be scary and you find out that it's really, really good. You come out the other side and you feel like the risk was worth it. And then it doesn't take long until you want to eat there again. And then you begin to miss it when you don't have that food for a long time. Your taste buds start to actually crave the flavors. When you find other foods... No, you want that food again. When you find something that is better, you don't neglect that. You go back and you have it again and again and again. This is what God gives us in Jesus. Something better. An agreement that's not based on us and our works, but his work and his love for us. So, know what Jesus has done for you. Come, take and eat. Jesus gives you his body and his blood. And in this meal, every single time, he gives you forgiveness. And there's nothing better than that. Amen. We ask uh, everybody here and everybody watching online, if you're willing and able, please connect with us. We'd love to know how to serve you and serve our community better. You can do that uh, scanning the QR code or going online to our website. Uh, you can get connected to our church center app. That will help me do a follow-up and get to know you and get coffee or food with you. Uh, If there's anything we can pray for, you can send it online like a couple of you did on Sunday and know that I've been praying for you and I will be praying for you as you do those things. One of the areas of life that God calls us to pool our resources is financially too so that we can keep each other and keep our community more connected to Jesus. Uh, If you've been moved to do that, you can do that through the offering plate and back or online. We'll take a minute to get connected.
please stand for prayers. If there's ever anything that we can pray for you, please let me know before worship. We'd love to include it. At the end of every little petition, I'll say the words, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. Let's pray. Eternal Savior, we are gathered in the quiet of this holy evening as you gathered with your disciples long ago. We are here to grasp how wide and long and high and deep your love is and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Lord, in your mercy. It was love for sinners that made you willingly go to the cross. Swords could have been drawn to protect you and angels summoned to deliver you. Yet you did not allow it because you were determined to make your life a guilt offering, the guiltless for the guilty. May we depend on nothing other than your willing love for the removal of our guilt and the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. It was self-giving love that made you take the role of a servant and stoop to wash your disciples' feet in the upper room. You set an example by which you would shatter pride and create humble servants out of all who follow you. By your love, shatter our pride and make us always more willing to serve than to be served. Lord, in your mercy. It was love for your Father in heaven that prompted you to enter the garden and approach his throne in prayer. There you sought grace and mercy in your time of need. There he strengthened you to do the work for which you were destined. Teach us to go to our Heavenly Father in every need as you did. Bless us with the grace and mercy to live out our lives in obedience and faith. Lord, in your mercy. It was love for your disciples in every age that caused you to institute Holy Communion. In the mystery and wonder of this sacrament, you give us your own body and blood. Through this heavenly feast, assure us of forgiveness, life, and salvation, and unite us with the church above. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight on behalf of our sister, Martha Johnston, As uh, the worship service began, she was in an ambulance on her way to the hospital. Be with her. Give skill to all the people who are taking care of her. If it's your will, bring her back to full health so that she can know what you've done for her. But use this to your glory. And in all things, keep her closely connected to you and your love for her. Be with Dave and Audrey also as they support and are with her. And keep them close to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us this evening as we pray our private prayers. And hear us as we join together and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil who overcame us by a tree would in turn by a tree be overcome. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had broken it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated.
We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We'll sing our closing song, Abide With Me. Good evening again. Thanks to everybody for being here for worship. It's an awesome thing where we get to remember our Savior Jesus and how we're connected to him in baptism and in his word and in this really special gift in the Lord's Supper too. What a blessing every time we get to celebrate. Tomorrow we get to continue in our Holy Week meditations, especially focusing in on the cross and how crazy it is that we have the symbol of death and it hangs here at the center of our church. And it's out on the, the front of our church out there. And it's things we as Christians wear all the time. Because Jesus' sacrifice is different from every other sacrifice. His sacrifice actually does something not only just for you and for me, but it wins forgiveness for all people. Come back tomorrow, 6 p.m. That's our worship service. Uh, good Friday, good for us, uh, not for Jesus. His was a hard sacrifice. Then Easter Sunday, 9 a.m. worship, 10.30 brunch time. There is a sign up now in the back for men's breakfast coming up on the 6th of April. You can see lots of spots there. Uh, certainly if you're a guy, we'd love to have you here. And don't feel like you got to bring food, but just bring yourself. It'll be good to see you that night. Parents night out's coming up on the April 19th. We'll just kind of, that Diggs is giving a thumbs up. Lots of other good stuff going on. Uh, if you worshiped online, thanks for joining us online. We look forward maybe to the day where you can be here in person, and we'd love to see you in person, too. And um, as we said in the, the prayer of the church, too, if 
you want to say another prayer tonight for Martha and for uh, all the work of doctors and whatever is going on, uh, that would be much appreciated and a good thing. God bless your Holy Week celebration and your time spent thinking about your Savior Jesus.